Hi, so today we're going to continue on with a few more board repairs. I am trying to fix the mess here. I am breaking some of my rules. I prefer to fix the mess and then work, but I just want to get as much of this out of my way as possible. And that, that's kind of bad thinking because if you don't really get everything you want done then, and you're tired from your work, then you never get to the point of fixing the mess. And you continue it tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and you just kind of get a bigger mess. And I'm going to try to avoid that, but just this once, let's break the rule, just so I can get away a week's worth of work that's sitting here waiting to be done. So this is another machine that somebody brought in with a board issue. This is an 820-3115, and the described issue is no picture on the screen, and what they want me to do is replace the LCD connector. And this is somebody where it's like, you know, I want you to only replace the LCD connector. I don't have a picture. I, I read online. I probably the LCD connector. Replace the LCD connector. I don't get a picture. And when I talk about this stuff, like, you know, and I talk about clients and I talk about customers and the, some of the silly things they do, one of the things I'm often accused of is people will say, you must not like your customers. You must not respect your customers. And that's one of the things that I, I shouldn't say I take offense to because I don't really give a fuck about the opinions of people on the internet. But it's something that I just, it kind of strikes me because that's not actually true. I say funny things in these videos, but in reality... What I want to do is I want to make sure that they leave happy. I want to make sure they leave with something that works. So if I go ahead and do what they ask because they're being pushy, knowing that that will not result in a working machine, knowing that there will be conflict at the end of it, where they're going to think that I lied about what I did or that I'm just trying to milk them for more money later because I, they think it's the connector and I say I replaced the connector and it still doesn't work, or even like that's lack of respect. So when I lack the balls to say you're wrong. You don't do this for a living. Here's why you're wrong. And here's what's going to happen if we do it your way versus here's what's actually wrong. And here's what's going to happen when we do it my way. If you don't come up with a diplomatic way to explain that, because you just, for, you just don't have the social skills or the time or the balls to actually talk to people because you're afraid of confrontation, because you're afraid of even worse, not afraid of confrontation, but you're afraid that they may not like you. You have less respect for your customers than me. I respect my customers enough that I want them to leave with a working device. I respect my customers enough that I want them to be happy at the end of the day, even if that means that they may be a little bit unhappy right now because I'm telling them that what they're telling me is wrong, even if that may make them a little unhappy. I'm not focused on their little unhappiness right now. I'm focused on their long-term happiness in terms of you left this place and you actually have something that works versus you left, you paid, and I did what you asked and it didn't work. So here, the uh, described issue is no image. Replace the LCD connector. And let's see if you can notice why this is wrong. So I plug it in. It's turning on. Now there's no picture on the screen, but there's also no chime. It doesn't chime. It doesn't chime because the CPU is not turning on. So let's take a look at this and see if I'm right about the CPU not turning on. So I'm going to open up my schematic here, and I'm going to figure out where it is that I can open and measure for vCore. All right. Let's unplug the sleep sensor so this thing knows to stay on. And let's get the multimeter in view of the camera. And let's measure for CPU V core. And what do I get? Oh, what do you think would happen if I replaced my LCD connector when the LCD connector looks fine and I have zero volts of CPU V core? And that's the thing. Like, this, this is not something that was for customers. This is actually another store. So again, not only should you ignore your customers when they tell you to do silly, stupid shit, you should also ignore other stores, other, cust other tech customers when they tell you to do silly, stupid shit. Because ultimately, if you know that somebody else is trying to set you up to fail, you got to be able to recognize that so that you don't get owned. Because again, even though they're wrong... If you if you are the tech like you're you're the adult you know you ever like you ever have a fight with like with a kid like let's say you're 12 years old and you're supposed to be looking after the six year old and the six year old just keeps poking you in the side of the head and he keeps poking you in the side of the head and he keeps poking you in the side of the head and you finally say get away from me and you and you didn't mean to hit him hard but you just kind of slap him a little bit and then he starts crying and crying and crying you know who gets in trouble 
You! Because you, as the 12-year-old, are supposed to know better about hitting the little kid. You're supposed to walk away, or you're supposed to carry the kid to his room and tell him don't leave your room because you're punished or whatever, but you're not supposed to just whack him in the head. You're, not, you're supposed to know better than your little brother. Even if your little brother is the one who started it, even if your little brother is the one who's being a little shit, you're supposed to know better. And the same is true when you're a technician who's working on these products. If you're a tech who works on these products, you know that you know something that the customer doesn't. And you need to just get out of this kind of like insecure mindset where you just want to, you just want them to like you. You want to avoid confrontation. You just want to do what's asked. And then again, like these, the people say stuff like, well, I did what was asked and they still weren't happy. I guess there was no making them happy. Oh, well. And then you wonder why all these places have these one and these two star Yelp reviews. And like, because they, they really feel like they're in the right. Your job is not to do what people ask you, your job is to make sure that people leave happy. And that often means you know, going back and forth with them. It often means having unpleasant conversations with them. And it often means just having to do this back and forth. But if you do that back and forth and you do it properly and you show people things and you're not an asshole, what's going to happen is that they, most of the time they're actually going to be reasonable and listen to you. And if they're not reasonable, well, you know, in that case, then they can just fuck off. But this is why we have no CPU V core here. So this is the chip responsible for the buck regulator that creates CPU vCore. That buck regulator chip is over here. Uh, this is the ton resistors. These set the switching frequency of the buck regulator. So again, that, that buck converter can be running off of a 12-volt power line. It can be running off a 14-volt power line. It can be running off of a 10-volt power line. That chip is fine controlling that thing in many different ways. But it needs to know what the actual, what, what the uh, high side voltage is in order to do that. And when we measure these resistors, I would bet my nutsack that we don't get the 150 and the 180 something kilo ohms that we're supposed to. Does this surprise anybody? Of course not. And how did this happen? Water. Beautiful water. Beautiful, revenue-generating, MacBook-killing water. So what we have to do is replace those, and once we replace those, it'll probably work. And I'll show you what it is on the schematic in a little bit. But again, this is important. Don't do the things that people ask you to do. Because when, you, when you do what somebody asks you to do, again, if, if they tell you, I want this to work again, even then, like if somebody says, replace this component, your question should be, well, do you want it to work or do you want me to replace that component? And you have to come up with a nice way to say that. If somebody says, make this work again, you should be looking at that system and you, sh you shouldn't be actually making it work again. You should be asking what their needs are because they may be asking you to make something work again that is not meant for what it is they're doing. Maybe that item broke because they're using it in a manner that it's not supposed to be used anyway. Maybe they want you to fix their HD-SDI camera system that's running on lines that are 900 meters long, when in reality, it's not about you fixing their camera setup. It's about you going, hey, this is not supposed to work over 900 meters of wiring. Here's what you need to, to implement to make that work. But there is no, like, me replacing your DVR or me replacing your cameras or me replacing your wire right now because what you need is to change what you're doing. You understand? Makes sense? All right. What's really sad is that Harry from the course had a board with a very similar problem to this one. The only other issue with his is that it had a huge, I mean like a huge hole to the left of this area where his CPU V-Core was. So even when you restored CPU V-Core, the hole in the board by, by all the capacitors for CPU V-Core was causing it to fluctuate. And when you finally decided to remove the broken capacitors in that area, it wound up 
fucking the board and sending everything to ground. So that was kind of sad. Poor Harry. He was a nice guy. I enjoyed having him in the class. I wish him the most of success in the Netherlands, kicking ass, fixing boards. But I still feel bad for his, his poor little H1278 board. I took a picture of it. I should be uploading those pictures from the core shortly. That's technically soldered on both sides, but anybody who regulars this channel knows that I would call that a shit stain of a pad. And you would know that I don't really feel comfortable leaving things on a shit stain. So let's come up with a solution for that. We're going to expose some of the copper from the trace that goes to both of those resistors. Then I'm going to solder a wire. Okay. Now let's get a wire. I'm going to use the wire from the inside of uh, the the battery, an A1278 or an A1286 battery. So I just cut up the wire. Here we go, I finally found it. All right, this is what I hate. Like, it should not take longer than in, in a second to find anything. It should all be laid out properly. And it's not because I got, I haven't cleaned, because I'm tired and was on Amtrak all day after no sleep. Bah. We'll be back in business properly soon. I hate messes. Okay, got you. Let's get rid of the flux so I can get under the wire. Battery is almost dead. Let's plug it in. The fan spins. And now that I have CPU V core, the screen turns on. So again, you if, if it's not chiming, if you have zero volts on CPU V core, it's not no image. It's no brain. And luckily, this one doesn't have a hole in it like Harry's board did, so, so it actually stood a chance of working again. But that's it for today, and I hope you learned something. I left out the part where I show you on the schematic what was going on, didn't I? My mistake. Sorry about that. I'm getting tired. All right.
Let's check this out. This is what I like. I need a real vacation. My staff is joking because you know I, when I go to this class, I'm away from work for a week, and after being away from work for a week, I mean I'm away from work at a, in a hotel upstate, and like. No, I'm I'm fixing boards and showing people how to fix boards, which is the exact opposite of what you are looking for when you want a vacation from fixing boards. It's like that that's not a vacation, but very funny. Anyway, so this is the chip that you were looking at, and the resistors that were messed up were these two right here. So for CPU, I am VP ton. Now some of these chips you cannot Google the data sheet for, which sucks. But on older generations, you can Google this U7400 chip. And what you'll find on Google is you'll find a data sheet. And on the data sheet, you'll be able to see what ton pins do. And it says, because again, when I see ton, I have no idea that what that does is it's what sets switching frequency. I have no fucking clue. But I know that when I see that it's corroded, I see it's nasty, I look up the data sheet, I read what it does, and that's what it does. You know, so this PPVIN CSO CPU IMVP over here, if I copy and paste that, that is 12.8 volts. So that's pretty much PP bus G3 hot. So this PPVIN S5 high side others iSense and computing iSense is PP bus G3 hot. PPVIN SO CPU IMVP is PPVIN S5 CPU computing iSense. So PPVIN's SO CPU IMVP is pretty much G3, uh, PP bus G3 hot. Those are the same things. So uh, or over here, PP bus G3 hot is going to the ton pins to tell this chip that we work off of 12.8 volts on this board. And as you can see, the input of the buck regulators for PPV core SO CPU are also PP bus G3 hot. So the MOSFETs that are creating this CPU vCore are making it from PP bus G3 hot, and the buck regulator controller chip is also being told, use that frequency as the reference to know how to set the switching frequency. Because again, with the way a switching power supply works, you're averaging. So you're taking 12 and you're turning it into 1. How are you going to take 12 and turn it into 1? And it's not magic. You take 12, and then you say, OK, no more 12. Let's go 0. 12, OK, no more 12. Let's go 0. And you average it out, and you get the 12 to 1. If I have 18 volts, I'm going to be switching slower than if I have 12 volts. If I have 5 volts and I want to make 1 volt, I'm going to be switching faster, because I need more 5-volt spikes to create 1 volt than I need 12-volt spikes to create 1 volt. 